hello everybody and welcome we'll give a minute for people to filter in um get screens situated as they all reset as we go into the breakout and i've remembered to hit the record button before i started talking this time which is excellent excellent really quick did you guys happen to catch so she said that the training the swim check trainings were may 5th or may 18th and you have to be qualified to do them and you can get qualified at another training when was that training calendar and that uh th so i think it, the the swim and water rescue training i think is the one uh, she mentioned there and let me see if i can pull up the date of when they're trying to do that i don't know but i'm looking at mike 63 days and kristen posted 66 yesterday so i think we need kristen to check her number because <laughs> mike's been I, right on the money the entire I, time <laughs> I tried to do my math today and I got 63. So maybe, maybe there's a leap day somewhere in between. Uh, maybe they haven't told it's us yet. It's definitely Kristen. It's all good. <laughs> um, and I was looking for aquatics. And it's called swim and water rescue. I think. on that one. I think April 9th. Nope, the April 9th already happened. So that's not it. I don't see another date yet. Uh, and I did not pick up on that one. So I'll, I'll ask about that. Let's try to get that information out too. Um, but I think that was the swim and water rescue. I thought she said like June, which makes no sense. Right? If you have to get read, you have to get qualified in June for checks in May. Sure. Well, so I think the idea is, is they're trying to run those more often generally. And so if you already have a qualification, you're able to run those checks. That's great. We'll absolutely still be running swim checks at camp during check-in. So um, it's it's not that units are gonna be required to do that ahead of time, um, but especially for, uh, yeah, Ellen, so you should be able to uh, hop out. Oh, no, I think I can do it actually. I got it. I think I, I, think I got that. Um, so Ellen, I think uh, I think I tried to send you over to the GSR one now. Oh, it's, she's not. She she's over in the GSR. Good. Hopefully that works. Uh, yeah. So we'll absolutely still be running swim checks during check-in. Um, this is uh, more an option, especially for those units that are trying to do aquatics programs outside of camp, uh, who maybe don't want to wait until camp to have those swim checks done. Um, just trying to give them uh, more options to make that happen. Um, so I know I think uh, Doug. Tried to run one back in April uh, and has been trying to offer those sort of things every couple months to uh, make more people available to be able to supervise those sort of activities. Yeah, I just wanted to have all the information in case anybody wanted to spearhead that one in our group. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking at um, the experience base camp um, and there is a swim and water rescue tab and they list four dates. The first one that they list there is is uh, June eighteenth, week before camp starts, um, and then there's two in July and one on August. But I don't know if those are the dates that she said. Here, I'll throw the link to what I found in chat. Thank you. Yeah, I would I would go on that for now. That. That date is swimming in my mind, but I also know it's our staff move-in date, so I swimming in your without, mind <laughs> without yeah exactly without putting my eyes on it I I I can never be sure uh, so yeah I would go by that and uh, it's uh, definitely a great opportunity to have um, 
So a few things I want to talk through uh, this evening. First of all, I wanted to talk through online med forms. Um, we have those links. I, I attempted to send them out about an hour ago. So we'll we'll talk through it, whether that I'm worked or not. I got it. My only problem is, and I keep telling my counsel this, every time I do anything on the jot, I get no responses. I've signed up for okay. various stuff and I never get receipts. I never get anything. Okay. And they keep telling me I'm the only one who has said that. I'm like, that is not physically possible. If every time I've done this, I'm not getting a response. It's either comcast.net maybe. Because sometimes different hmm. email things can have fun things like that. Um, but the last time I was on a district call, I had a couple other people tell me that they hadn't received stuff either. So just be careful with jot.net if people start, or the jot forms, if people start telling you they're not getting responses. Okay, definitely something I'll, I'll keep a lookout for. And uh, I will do a little poking around the, the back end settings. But to very see excited for this style of med form. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we are too. So. Uh, here's the, the background, the, the premise, uh, we're, ma we're making the effort to move to online med form submission. That's, that's our goal is to get as much of them online as we can, uh, just to facilitate the paperwork getting into camp to facilitate the, the checking of paperwork and, and all that. Um, the downside on our end, which is mostly on our end, is that where we didn't move the registration system over and our registration system and this system don't talk together uh, and we sort of have to manually try to connect the dots on the back end. So uh, what that means is when I sent those out about an hour ago, it was sort of a manual mail merge. Uh, if someone is registered and did not get that email, it, it doesn't mean that they can't submit the med form. Um, there's one link for each week. Uh, so if you're sharing that link to someone else in who's going the same week as you, that'll work fine. If they're going a different week, uh, hang tight. I'm going to try to make like a one page that has all of them you know, week by week, uh, and try to share that out on social media later today or tomorrow uh, in the near future. I just haven't gotten to that part quite yet. Um, so there's one full one link for each week, uh, and you should be able to fill that out multiple times. So if you have multiple people in your household going to camp, that shouldn't be a problem. If that is a problem, let me know because I will have to poke around and try to fix that. But I think I clicked that box already on, on Eloise. Um, as a reminder, for med forms, we require parts A, B, and C for everyone who is coming to camp. So that is for any youth who are coming as campers, any youth who are coming as den chiefs, any adults who are staying, um, even if they are staying less than that 72 hours that the BSA med form says that they require. Uh, the state of New Hampshire has stricter requirements in this particular case. And so we need part C to be filled out for everyone who is coming to camp to stay for any period of time. Um, on the online system, we're working through a JOT form, which is a HIPAA compliant platform to manage that. Um, you'll be able to fill out most of parts A and B right in the form online. It's going to ask you to upload um, your insurance card, and there might be one other piece along there in A and B, but I think the insurance card is the big one. And for part C, it's going to ask you to upload that because part C has to be signed by uh, a healthcare practitioner. So you will go get that filled out, scan or take a picture of it and upload that into uh, job form to be able to submit. So you do still need to get that signature on part C. Um, it should be set up to send you an email when you uh, when you hit submit and you should be able to go back in and make changes if you need to edit it afterwards. Uh, and so if any of those functional bits aren't working, um, either reach out to me and let me know or reach out to Brendan Adams, um, who is our outdoor program specialist who's working full time with the council now. And between the two of us, we'll try and make sure that we uh, we get that solved and that rectified there. Um, it's possible that the email did not get to everyone. Uh, it looked like most emails were in in uh, Double knot. It looked like there were a couple that were TBD at tbd.tbd, and so those those couple ones wouldn't have gone through. That's what we're going to try to continue to, to push that information out through uh, other channels as well. Um, but those should be available and, and live. Where's the best place to print form C from? Aha! Uh, I have that link pulled up already. Uh, well, 
I sort of did, and then I, I clicked one button too far. Uh, so part C, I usually just go right to uh, scouting.org page. The poll um, comes from the AHMR. That's a big, scary, long link. Let's see if I can take some of the extra tag off the back of it and see if it still works. It does. There, so that link, um, and, then, and if you misplace that link at any point in time, if you just Google AHMR or annual health and medical record, um, the BSA scouting.org is usually the first thing that pops up there. Um, and you would be looking for the, are you going to camp question? The second option there uh, that has that A, B, and C form. So you should be able to get that printed off. Um, and a reminder that that does not necessarily have to be filled out by a PCP. People generally do as part of their physical, um, but there are other other options, urgent care centers often do camp physicals and, and things like that, uh, where they'd be willing to help fill that out. It does not necessarily have to be your primary doctor who, who signs that form. Um, although if you can get them to do that, that can be great. Um, I have two questions. Sure. So I've had some parents already hand me the full ABC via paper. Are they also now gonna have to go on and do this? Um, or is there a way for me to do it for them? Yeah, that's that's what I'm unsure of, uh, and okay. I've I've already had a, someone reach out asking if they can mail it in as well. Um, I'll have to okay. ask around and see what we're going to try to do with those. Um, okay. I think we're we're going to prefer to get them online if we can. So, I mean, I don't mind like if I have them, I don't mind doing it for them. So I was just like, I don't want to have to have my parents redo it. And then my second question is. So if you have multiple weeks, do you have to re-key punch A and B every time you log into this? Um, so like, for example, I have a kid who comes as a den chief for Carpenter, but he goes to summer camp at Valley. Mm -hmm. So here's Because normally what, I'll say what I do is I do one and I just make copies for everywhere he goes. Yeah. <laughs> I know I know how I want the system to work and I, I know it's not quite keyed in that way right now. Uh, okay. So where it is online, we, we would be able to sort of pull the Carpenter ones are listed a little differently from GSR. So if you have scouts who are attending both camps, if you can submit to each camp, that would be great. Um, okay. Although I know it's a little tedious. Uh, if they're attending multiple Right, because I had actually weeks, already got mine all set and already copied and ready to go too. So I'm like, I gotta refill everything out. Um, <laughs> if they're coming multiple weeks, it should be easier for us to be able to look back, right. find them um, a little easier I, on our side, a little logistics. There, but. I was just curious if it was like those kids who might go to summer camp for three different weeks, hmm. are they the, filling out all the same information three times? That could be a downside to the program just for future yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I and I know the way the way we want it built with a, a new registration system should be able to handle that a little differently. Perfect. Um, okay. Putting it on the list. Uh, Will we be able to see who has submitted their forms? That is what I don't think we'll be able to to do. Because um, aren't we supposed to have side. a copy? Yeah, so what I am encouraging uh, you all to do is uh, if you if you can collect at least parts A and B filled out um, from your unit, units uh, I would, or your parents, I would encourage you to do that. Um, I don't know as if we can print A and B and hand it to you. That's what I'm unsure if we're able to do as a camp. Um, I'm just wondering, like, just to make sure that everything gets filled out and done. Yeah, and I know what have no way of knowing. my slash our next goal on the back end here is to figure out is how are we going to do that checking uh, across the two lists um, that I know is going to have to be a semi manual process to compare registration against what net forms are turned in. Um, it's Luckily, I'm on vacation this week, so I have time to figure out a couple of those things, but uh, uh, that's definitely something we'll be looking for. So I, there's not a, a portal from the unit side uh, to be able to see that and to be able to figure that out other than asking your parents, did you fill it out yet? Uh, and then them saying yes or no from there, uh, at least for now. 
Um, I know there's a question over here. Will the system prompt parents uh, to also include copies of their insurance card? Yes. Uh, so right along, uh, as I can actually share my screen and show a little bit of what this looks like. Um, there's no submissions yet, so I shouldn't have any problem sharing the screen. Um, your when you go in, it will look slightly different because you will have not the creator side and uh, just the, if I hit the preview button, it will ask me to fill out lots of things in part A before uh, it lets me show you the other couple pages, but it will look something like this. Um, so it's pulled right from uh, the PDF. I'm not sure if it actually shows it that to you along the side there, but um, you can see it's just pulled fields from there. So right down along part A, right after it asks for um, parent signature and whatnot. Oh, it, oh, I saw it there last time. Oh, no, just kidding. It's that at the top of part B. So underneath the general information of who are you and how do we contact you and those sort of things, um, there's this spot right here asking for a photocopy of both sides of the insurance card. So you see it's just a file upload. That could be a picture, that could be a scan. Um, I know a lot of insurance cards right now, if you have an online portal, just give you a PDF uh, download of it that you could drop in there. Um, and then contact information going down the list of things from Part B. Um, another possible upload here, uh, if you have additional medications that need to be listed, the signatures for non-prescription medications, which I think are a little easier to see here than they actually are on the paper form. So that could be one benefit. And then on down to um, that part C physical that's asking you to submit it there. So so, so just a question about that part about like all the, the shots. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times parents just give us a copy of like their physicals for that. So if they can't get past, they don't normally fit like, I've had ones that just say see attach. Yeah, so it's, it's going to ask them to fill, fill those everything out. in. Um, so like that's to, that to could be a problem for some adults. But like for example, I don't know when my shot happened, so I got a titer, which mm -hmm. is a blood test to figure out when something when I if I had something. So mm -hmm. I don't have a date for it. Yeah, um, I would use uh, the best information you have. So okay. you, if you know a date or an approximate date, uh, go with that. If you need to explain something, there's this field that I know says, oh gosh, that I know says okay. if had disease list date, but uh, could be a spot to put in some uh, screening information there if needed. Um, and this additional information box here could be used for that as well. So, um, but yes, it is going to ask for this uh, as you go through that form. Right. Does the form allow you to save in progress and come back? Not I'm sure. not seeing a button. Okay. Because I noticed that part C is required. So if they, mm -hmm. if they fill the whole thing out and don't have part C, then they can't submit the form. And they're going to have to come, potentially come back and fill the whole thing out again. So just wondering. Yeah, that would be good if it did. I'm not sure yet. And I will look into if that's anywhere in the settings for me to be able to do. Okay. Because you would have to have two copies if it's you and your child. Mm -hmm. um, I did find a checkbox that said allow multiple submissions or at least the one that would restrict that. And so that shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem there. Uh, but I will look more for if there's a save in progress uh, before submission. So why would we need to collect parts A and B? Uh, I've been encouraging leaders to do that uh, because those are the scouts you're often with. And so if there are you know smaller things happening uh, that you maybe are not calling the nurse for immediately, um, but that you want reference for or your parents are asking about, um, it's good practice to have those on hand for, for your scouts on any outing or any activity you're doing. Um, I know some Unless you know allergies for your group, which is a really important one, especially for pack out night where you're cooking at your site. I just, I don't know. Um, I just wonder if some people would be like, well, why do you need that now? Because you can't pass that. 
Could you encourage all the parents to just print the PDF when they're done and just hand you the PDF? In theory, it would be an option too. It could be just like, just in case there was a problem with submission, can you give me a copy of it? Um, and I'll look more, I'll ask more. I know I have some questions from our, our medical director already. I'll ask for some more clarification about what level of information are we allowed to give from our side? This is different than in the past because in the past, generally med forms have gone to unit leaders and then come to us uh, and so that flow of information has been a little different. And I don't know how much that changes when we have the information and now are asking to give it to um, leaders or volunteers or, or non-employees. Those questions I'm not 100% clear on. So I have to do some more asking on that um, and go from there. That's awesome. Are we violating any kind of anything by asking for HIPAA information? Well, and that's where you as a unit leader asking for that from parents, if parents give that to you, um, then they've given that information to you. I, I think, I don't think there are as many questions on that flow of information. Um, that is my, my not a lawyer perspective on that. So I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I will ask a bit more about that and try to clarify some of those uh, as we, as we work through that. Um, yeah, so uh, those emails should have gone out. Like I said, we'll try to uh, put together a page of links that has those uh, that we can post and email out as well for people who may not have gotten that link or if the email bounced or whatever. Um, it didn't look like too many bounced back. I think I tried to send 381 emails and I think two out of office replies and one non-response bounced back, which is really, really good on rate. So it's so one of the smoothest <laughs> smoothest uh nail merges i've i've done in a, a while so uh if again if you run into any issues with those uh if something doesn't seem to be working uh, the way it's supposed to uh reach out to me and or brendan and we will try to get it fixed as best as we can and and we thank you for your patience and us figuring out the our sides of the system as well uh, we're excited to be able to do it online but we know there's going to be a couple couple hiccups along the way our uh are likely. So uh, thank you for your patience in advance as we do that. Um, yeah, that was my big one. Uh, registrations, you know, we know the early bird deadline passed uh, in the beginning of April and we small disagreement with double knot on what early bird payment deadline meant versus before versus on the day. Uh, but I think we got those issues all solved. Uh, it is definitely not too late to register scouts or add more scouts to your registration. So if you're a unit who has not registered yet, you can absolutely do that still. If you have scouts who are interested in coming who have not already registered, they can absolutely still do that. You should be able to make those changes and add those in uh, up until uh, May 31st. Uh, and after May 31st, We'll see if we have wiggle room. We will likely have some wiggle room even then, but uh, we're trying to get as much of that as we can right up ahead of that. Uh, I know we got a number of questions in the past week about uh, camperships and camp scholarships. Uh, I believe that uh, that is being worked on at the moment. I think those are going to be mailed out or emailed out sometime this week is the last I heard on that. Uh, I think they were working on putting that letter and mail merge together. Uh, Yes, and I only know that because I've asked the, asked a couple of people that question too. So, uh, if you have more questions about that, again, I would send those towards um, Brendan Adams or the support at nhscouting.org, call the council office, and uh, we'll work through that. But I believe they're aiming to send those out sometime this week. Um, uh, yeah, I have a question. <laughs> Happening. Um, we had a, a bit of a confusion and I had a couple of scouts that ended up getting registered for camp. I took them off of the registration, but will that deposit just get applied to the rest of it? Yeah, so whatever uh, funds are on file um, would just be applied to whatever your balance is at the moment. Okay, um, and then my other question was, as far as youth protection, like my youth protection expires in September, but I was talking to the unit leader and 
he said something about New Hampshire being different and needing it to be annual for camp instead of that biannual. Can you clarify that for me? So the, the DWC, the Daniel Webster Council Standard, is that uh, youth protection training be completed annually each year. Um, and the way they end up talking about that is when you get to recharter to registration, your YPT should not expire at any point in the year for which you're registering. Um, and that is different than the national requirement that it be done uh, biannually. When we are looking for camp, we are primarily looking for, is it current? Um, does, does national say that it's expired yet or not? Um, but technically anyone who is registered in DWC should have that current through the entirety of 2022 at this point, um, unless they're one of the counselor district registrations that's on an April to April rather than a December to December, June, uh, June, January to January schedule. Um, but yes, yeah, that's a DWC said. When we check for camp, we're mostly looking for, is it current? Uh, because especially when we're looking at people from out of council who maybe don't have that requirement. Uh, yes. Good question, good question. And that's a great reminder that any and all adults who are coming and staying at camp uh, should, well, must have completed youth protection training and be registered with the unit they are coming to camp with. Um, and that is a point that's being pushed a little bit more uh, on the national level is not only should they be registered to make sure they've gone through a, a criminal background check and the uh, ineligible volunteer database and uh, all the checks that ESA does, uh, but also that they have been approved by the charter organization that is um, sending that group to camp. Uh, so they should be registered with that unit. Yeah. It's a pay so, for that, correct? Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> They have to pay for registration, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, so, and at this point, that would be a prorated fee for the remainder of the year, the, the full year registration fee. And whether your PAC or unit or charter organization um, ask leaders to pay for their registrations or pays for them on their side, I know that varies a little from PAC to PAC. Thinking about the Tiger partners. Um, yes. So they're going to have to pay to register. And does that automatically happen on the website or is that? So I believe when they sign up as a Tiger partner, um, that's collecting information and it's sort of putting a flag, but it's not a, a registration. It's not running them through the, uh, the screening databases or the criminal background check to do that. So um, on a unit level, uh, I would look to register those people either as uh, committee members, if you would like to do that, or as uh, unit scouter reserves. Um, that would take the fee and then trigger that check. What about assistant den leaders? Assistant den leaders yeah, should already have done it, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, two questions. First is I have someone who's registered with the troop that's associated with the same chartered org as me, so that should be okay, correct? Uh, should probably be fine. And we've we've okay. looked at those I in got, the past and did I have it. his, yeah. It's the same one as last year. So it's the same person. So it's easy. Um, and then when I initially registered, I did not have some of them have that information, but they're like, we're like, hey, this is a great opportunity for you mm -hmm. to join. <laughs> and so they're all working through the process of becoming full. So we just have to make sure that they get everything done before they make it to camp, correct? What, what should that, that cutoff be? Yeah, so like the idea of that process- Two or three weeks before, or like a month and a half before? I would say as soon as you can right now. As soon as, uh, okay. if, I just wanna make sure you and, get it in time, so. <laughs> yeah, so from our end, what we're gonna look for is that member ID number. And as soon as they log in to take youth protection training, the system should assign them a member ID number. Um, okay. Can be a little tricky to find sometimes, but that they should have to be able to connect that record. Um, so when and, I get yeah, all of that yeah. from everyone, should I just email you and be like, here's all the ID numbers for everyone in our group so that you can associate it? Is that the best way to do this? So it, there's a spot for that on the double knot registration. So, but I had already done double knot for them. Like I and registered should, them, but I didn't have that. You should be able to go in and add that to it. Edit. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That would be the easiest thing for, okay. for us if those are all Got in it. the same place. Um, Cause I know some people put in placeholder information for, for fields like that is got it and use that Perfect. as a reminder okay. to have people 
Thank you. Speaking of placeholder information, I for birthdays and it won't let me edit that. Interesting. Okay. I didn't know their birthdays. It was the last day. I didn't know. Just stop laughing at me. I told him he wanted to use the birthday that I gave him after he gave me his birthday. <laughs> I will poke around on the backside and see what's up with him. Check that out. Great. Um, yeah. Lots of exciting things. Uh, the couple other notes that I wanted to make sure I got out there were some upcoming dates of import. Um, our next camp director chat on May 29th, I believe was the day, the last of May. The website says 22nd. 22nd, then well, the 22nd it is there. Oh, because it's Memorial Day. Okay. That's why we probably switched that around. May 22nd. Or whatever day I put in the uh, in the leader's guide and such and such. I did put 22nd in the leader's guide. May 22nd, Sunday, May 22nd, will be our next uh, camp director chat. And that will be uh, our last one before we have campers on property. That will be our pre-camp meeting. Uh, I know in the past, we've had uh, a couple extra days, like a Wednesday and a Sunday. We're, we're consolidating it to that Sunday. We're gonna make sure we record that and have that available to other people. Um, so on, at that meeting, we're gonna plan to walk through some of the more nitty gritty of what does Sunday check-in look like? What are some of the program things going to look like? And some of the more mechanical being at camp and being ready for camp uh, bits and pieces. Then May 31st is our uh, registration deadline slash paperwork deadline. That's when we're aiming to have as much of everything as complete as we can uh, so that we can start making plans. We can start assigning campsites, uh, finalizing food orders and, and such and such uh, and start screening through med forms to make sure that they are uh, there and complete and, and so on. So uh, as much information as we can have that is complete and filled out by May 31st, uh, the better. When we get into June, on June 11th, Saturday, June 11th, will be our camp service day, setup day, uh, where we help Steve out as much as we can and try and get as much of the physical setup on the property done as possible before our staff arrive for training. Uh, the more of the tents and physical things we have out and about and around, the less our staff have to pick things up and put them down, and the more we can focus on um, you know, developing skills and, and leadership and training and get them to deliver the fantastic, awesome program that we know they're going to, but uh, we can help them feel more confident as they dive in and, and get make that happen. Yeah. Does that have to be like a one parent to one child ratio or can we bring up a bunch of kids? Like as long as we have enough adult to leader ratios, is that yeah, okay? You can absolutely do that as a unit activity. Uh, some units okay. do that as, as, as a camp out or a day activity. Um, sometimes they try to do a service project for a couple hours and you know, do an activity at the fort or do an activity somewhere else. And um, I don't know how many of those facilities are still available at the moment. I know uh, lots of groups try to come in during that weekend. Um, it, do we still have to tell someone if we plan to do this? Yeah, and so we ask that you try to give Steve Hamilton a heads up copy that email. There we go, stevenp.hamilton at scouting.org. Um, I think I will also try to make a, uh, an event on Facebook and such for that to, to remind folks of that. But uh, just to get a sense of how many people we are expecting, uh, what groups and, and how many people are coming because we do aim to provide people with lunch on that day. So uh, we wanna make sure we have enough food to uh, provide for all of those folks. The other thing happening on that day and that weekend is our Den Chief overnight on that Saturday, June 11th to Sunday, June 12th. Uh, and that's a chance for uh, any Den Chiefs you might have uh, coming to camp to get into camp, uh, meet some of the staff, 
uh, have some discussions and training about what does being a den chief in camp look like? What are the ways that uh, they can take on some leadership roles that they can be supportive of you as unit leaders? Um, try to give them tips, tricks, and show them the secret shortcuts and all of the fun games that they can play with scouts to uh, keep them from running around a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, so that it will be that weekend as well. Uh, if you're interested, if you have anyone who is looking to sign up for that, that registration is available at this link in the chat right there. I think those were the big dates I wanted to make sure I mentioned. Um, if you have other questions, other things uh, you were wondering about or that I can help with right now, I'm absolutely happy to try to answer those now, but those are all of the things that I had on my list to say for now. Uh, so if you don't have other questions and uh, you're gonna hop <laughs> off. Then so I had to miss the last- you want to stick around for other questions, go ahead. <laughs> I had to miss the last two because I had a troop committee meeting at the same time. Sure. Um, this is, so last year was my first year. And so I know that we have that return of free time. Can you just kind of go over that a little bit? Cause I didn't have that last year. So I don't really know what I should be planning in that time frame <laughs> absolutely absolutely so uh how our program schedule is going to be if, if you were here a few years ago it'll be like that if you weren't uh we have program blocks so we still will have three program blocks in the morning two after lunch the siesta and then two more program blocks and then after snack that space between snack and uh, evening flags is going to be free time and what will happen then is we'll have open program areas so the waterfront uh, will typically be open every day the uh, one of the shooting sports ranges will be open every day Not usually both will usually juggle them back and forth swarm will typically be open every day nature may be doing different activities or demonstrations as they go through the week fishing may be open some days so depending on on the day and our staffing availability will juggle things around a little bit so there's some interest and uh, we're not pre-scheduling groups to go to any of those things in particular so if it is a 90 degree day and your kids all want to go in the water we're going to do our best to to make that happen and you can bring that group down to the waterfront if it's a 95 degree day and they just want to run around like crazy people gaga ball is the place they can go it's all well and good whatever whatever they want to do um the important thing we want to Remember is we still want, you know, leadership and supervision with those groups. So depending on how many adult leaders you have is going to determine how much you might be able to split off. If you've got four leaders and two can take these kids and two can take these kids and you can divide and conquer. Fantastic. If you have fewer leaders and you need to make a consensus about where to go and, and how much time to spend where um, you can do that. Groups will go to the trading post sometimes during that time or just go to the campsite and lie down during that time you know any of the those things are available um our goal is to give some flexibility there for you as a unit to uh do things that you want to do um that are not necessarily we have to be here now we have to get to the fort in 15 minutes let's go let's go let's go uh give a, a little bit of a different pace to that afternoon time i like that because it made them all go to bed by nine o'clock yes yeah <laughs> uh and if your pack wants to use that time to pack something up to clean up the site, to go take showers. Um, you know, that's up to your pack to decide how you want to end up using that time. We'll do announcements uh, during morning flags is when we have done them in the past, uh, announcing what is going to be available that evening. Our, our staff like to do silly, goofy skits uh, to uh, one up each other and convince scouts to come to their programs. So it's always entertaining to see and uh, those all vary a little bit day to day. Hey, this so is Matt. The... Oh, go Pack ahead, Matt. 24. Hey, I got booted off um, when you were talking about medical forms, and sorry if I'm being redundant. Did you say there was a link that gets sent out weekly with the online ones? Yeah, so there, there's a link. Uh, I attempted to mail them out to anyone who's registered in Double Knot, uh, and it's a different link for each week. So there's a week one form, there's a week two form. Uh, the form isn't different, it just sort of helps us organize a little bit more so we don't have to filter through the whole summer every week as we go. Um, if you got that email from what I was able to pull from Double Knot, great, that link should work. Uh, if you didn't, I'm gonna try to take all those links and put them on one page 
it says if you're coming week one, click here, two, click here, so on. Um, I'm going to try and work on getting that together um, to put out on social media and, and hopefully in our uh, newsletter this week as well. Okay, so they'll be going out. Yeah, because I know our double knot goes out to our treasurer because we want her to get the email that she has to pay it. So she sure. probably got the email and was like, what is this? And so what I tried to do is I tried to pull uh, the parent emails, whatever email was associated with each individual person. Um, but sometimes units double that up a little bit and well, it depends. So depending on how information went in, it might, might not have gotten to everybody. Awesome. So yeah, because that's been the biggest question with our people is when the uh, online link is going to come out. So that should be coming out soon from you. Um, Absolutely. And I'm going to try to get that that other vehicle of getting to that. I'm going to try to get that out on socials. Um, I'm going to say tomorrow and not necessarily tonight. If I can get it tonight, that'll be great. Sometime <laughs> tomorrow. I got the link today. Mm. Yes. So you I might have already gotten that. I attempted to email them out about an hour and a half ago. So, so for the program choice form, yes. is that just so that you know how much interest there is in each of them more? Like, so we don't actually get scheduled that? So those are for those scheduled blocks, those three blocks in the morning and those two blocks in the afternoon. Those oh. are for Kristen to schedule those ones as they go. Oh, I thought that was for free time. Gotcha. Oh, that's completely different than last year. <laughs> My miss, I'm glad that's I asked okay. that question. No problem. Because no I problem. thought that was like picking where we wanted to go during free time. Like that's the no. actual program program. Yeah. That's, oh, that that's changes everything. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Yeah. And if you're, if you're, if, if you want to make changes, if you're able to go back in and change it, which I think I said it so you could do, um, then great. And if you're trying to, and it won't let you, let me know because I can hit a button and make that happen. That's Google Forms. I know Google Forms really well. Can I include the link to part C too? Yes. Like with the page of links for the weeks? Yes. I just have to find which sticky note I have that written on. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, I would be remiss if I, uh, if I forgot to mention, if you know anybody who is interested in working at camp, uh, we are still looking for some staff, especially in the over 18 and over 21 categories. If you know anyone who's retired or a teacher with the summer off or someone who happens to have a week or two off that uh, they'd be interested in volunteering or, or working for us in some way, uh, we'd be happy to talk to them and, and try and fill them in as part of the team. Um, my other goal this week is to Trying to put, a, put out some more information on some of those roles we're looking for. Um, we, are, we are getting along, but still looking for people, as I, I think many people in the camping industry are this year. So we're, we're pressing forward. And if you have any, any leads, any, anyone who uh, you can push our way, any help with, with that would be appreciated. It's a grand old time. It's fantastic. I, I started working there one week, and here I am 14 years later. I haven't left. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I keep going back to the same question. So for the program guide, yes. is there somewhere that tells us what some of those items are? Because I don't see it in necessarily the handbook, but maybe I just missed it. Uh, we like try to. What is parachute? <laughs> oh, didn't, I'm trying to think if we talked that much about parachute. Uh, parachute, if you uh, remember, is that like do, 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 do. gym classes? Okay, okay. Jumping parachute. out of a plane. That's that how I'm like, I will gladly Not throw a couple of, of my kids. <laughs> I don't think that's in the guide to safe scouting. Uh, uh, and my that personal old, children. <laughs> <laughs> that big old um, tarp parachute thing in gym class that everyone threw up in the air and then ran under and okay. the parachute. So I don't know how else to describe it. Every time we buy a new one, it's very exciting. Got it. Okay. Thank you. I'm like, is it what I think it is? Or is it like an acronym for something else that happens again? 
maybe we can get an indoor skydiving sometime. I don't know. It's we're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> so Brett, with the trading post, yes. uh, in the past you've taken DWC gift cards at the trading post. Mm -hmm. Do you know if that's going to be an option this year? I believe that is still going to be an option. Okay. Um, I think we're on the same system, the same square system we were last year. So that should still be an option. And to clarify, right, that's the Daniel Webster gift card not the one they sell at the scout shop. Yes. Because right, those are different. The Webster card, not the, uh, the gift card from the scout shop. Those are different systems that do not talk to each other. Yep. Uh, and I think we have those at camp at the trading post. Uh, I don't know as if they've been available before camp um, in the past. I don't believe that they are yet. Are we hoping for check-in like last year where it was kind of staggered and we were all in different, because I loved it. I thought it was yes. great. I loved it too. It was, it was great for us as well. I thought uh, it so we went are still very smooth. On doing that. <laughs> and uh, our, our aim again is going to be two weeks before uh, your arrival to have communication that gives you the information about what time uh, your check-in is, as well as what campsite uh, we we have assigned for you. Um, our goal is to get that to you two weeks before your check-in time. If we can get it sooner, great, but two weeks is our, our goal. Good question. Is there any great word question. on COVID tests when we show up like last year? I have not heard more. Um, I will also put that on my list of things to ask our medical director about. Um, Again, thought you guys did great last year with it. I thought it went very smoothly, but just curious so I can prep my family. <laughs> yeah, I will I will follow up and ask on that. Um, my impression right now is un unless something changes that tells us that we will have to do them. Um, I don't think we're planning on doing them um, unless that decision is made. So um, not saying that 100%. That's my, my impression at the moment. Uh, and I will follow up if that is something that we uh, will need to do. Uh, we'll be sure to communicate that. Sixty-three days. Sixty. It's almost two months away. It's crazy to think about. Crazy to think. Um, yeah, and like I said, I, I am on vacation from school this week, uh, which means I will be a finishing up some work for my grad class and b doing uh, lots of things to get ready and, and head forward for camp. Uh, that we're really excited for. I know we've got a, a handful, at least, of people at a April camp, April vacation camp over at a Carpenter this week. That. Brennan is uh, very excited to be running and running around with kids at camp. And we're going to be really excited to have uh, more at uh, Carpenter this summer. I think the last uh, update I'd seen was that we had about 400, just over 400. We just passed the 400 mark for uh, camp this summer, which is up from about 340 last year. Uh, so we're, we're looking pretty good given our, our pool of Cub Scouts in the council. We're uh, I think ahead of a trend we'd, we'd been at. Um, we know that pool's a little bit smaller, but we're, we're doing really well with the people we have. That's exciting. Well, we doubled the share, so I'm excited. <laughs> Excellent. And it's not too late to sign folks up. Uh, I know a number of people have been asking, and there was a question in the main room too, about uh, provisional. Um, I still have on my list to try to see if we can uh, secure leadership for uh, at least one or two weeks to have that as an option. Um, we don't have that secured yet, and so that registration isn't available. That if we are able to do that, again, we'll make sure we communicate that information out and and try and get that out as much as we can. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, but we do still have day camp options uh, for all seven weeks, as well as those family camping week options. Um, and those family camping weekends are July 8th to 9th, July 22nd to 23rd, and August 5th to 6th. And that was a slight change from uh, some previously published dates, I think, on that last one. So apologies for that change. But uh, those are the dates that uh, are there. And you can find those registrations up on the experiencebasecamp.org overnight camps. I can post that link in the chat too as well. Uh, it's eight o'clock. Thank you all for uh, coming to chat about camp and, and get some questions answered and trying to make this happen for uh, for your scouts and your packs. We're really excited to be to be gearing up. We we had our second meeting with our area directors a few weeks ago and throwing around lots of great ideas for uh, staff training and for program and evening program and, and such. There's a lot of excitement to get back to a place where, where camp scouting begins. That's, that's going to be awesome. So uh, thank you all for spending your time here and uh, I'll see you next month on May 22nd. Tell Fred. your friends, tell your scouting friends and we'll see you all there. Thank you. Get Thanks, a little Fred. rest this week. Yeah. <laughs> A sleep is sleep is high on my list too. <laughs> Good.